Hi everyone, I'm Kim and welcome to my studio. Thanks so much for joining me on my channel today. I really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much. Today, I'm gonna do kind of a quickie tutorial um, on a technique that I'm kind of getting obsessed with. There's an artist by the name of Olga Sobi who um, teaches this technique and I will never use a stencil the old way ever again. So when I say a stencil, of course I mean something like this where it has a pattern uh, cut out in it, right? And usually the traditional way of using a stencil is you put this on your paper or your wood or whatever it is that you're um, painting and you use a sponge or a uh, stencil brush or whatever and you you know stencil the paint on you pull it off and you have your pattern well she has taught a way of doing this and making it have a 3d effect having a raised element onto whatever it is that you're putting your stencil onto and ever since i have learned this type of um, technique I don't do stencils any other way now. I love this so much because not only does it give a 3D element, but the colors, the way the coloring goes on and everything, it just, I think it's really, really cool. So since I am obsessed with it, I thought I would share how it's actually done in case you would like to try this on a project that you're either working on or maybe something DIY that you want to do for yourself. So let's do a 3D stencil. <laughs> so with all that said, let's get started. So this is a canvas that I have been playing on um, trying to do some bloom pours and then yesterday I did a dump of all my extra paint and then I was playing around adding lines and all kinds of stuff and I'm not gonna lie I kind of like it I think it just got to a point where it became a mishmash and there's just way too much green on it so I figured well what the heck I've got this canvas I'm gonna show you how I would add a 3d stencil to this so these were the colors that I used and because there's so much green in it already, I can see there's a little bit of yellow, there's a little bit of this quinacridone rose in here. There's a little bit of blue, but I think for the purposes of this and to keep it simple, I think the yellow and the red against this green would really contrast and stand out better. So I'm gonna take my stencil here. Now, Obviously, there's a multitude of ways you can do this, but I thought about it earlier and I could do it like this, but I don't know. I found that to be just a little too quote unquote square. <laughs> so I thought this might be better. So it would, part of it would come off the canvas and then part of it wouldn't make it all the way to the end, but I kind of like the way this kind of looks. It's got this kind of diamond and different dimensionality. Ooh, big word, dimensionality. <laughs> so to begin, you want, first of all, you got to make sure that your canvas is dry. This has to be absolutely dry because we're going to be taping it down. So we're going to tape it down. Now you have to be careful, especially if you're using the entire stencil. Now, sometimes I may use a stencil and only use like a part of the stencil at a time. So I've done that multiple times, but because I'm going to be using the entire stencil I don't want to cover up any of the spaces which sometimes can be hard when you're trying to um, keep it stable but the whole point is you want to keep this as flat against the canvas as possible because the reason the part that makes this 3d is um, a gloss medium and if this bounces see how this has got this is bouncing too much if it bounces too much and it doesn't lay flat, it'll cause a problem. The um, medium will go underneath the stencil and it'll mess it up. So this can sometimes be the hardest part is just getting the stencil to lay flat. Oh yeah, there we go. 
and you want it to be secure as much as possible. So I think, I think we're good with that. I don't think I have to do over here, especially since I've got it. Yeah, it's good and flat now. So now I am going to use, this is what I use. I use a gloss medium. Now this particular gloss medium I really like because it's kind of clear. It's, you can see that it's kind of got a transparency to it and you'll see it as it goes on. There are some gloss mediums that are completely white and opaque and you can't see where you're putting it. Now understand that gloss medium, whether it's this kind or the opaque white ones or whatever, they will dry clear, which is what makes this technique so cool. So they start with these kind of cloudy or white colors, but they dry absolutely clear. But I like this one because like I said, it's a little bit more transparent so I can see where I'm putting gloss medium down, okay? So I've been, you can see I've been using this quite a bit. So like I said, I'm obsessed with this technique. So I'm going to use a palette knife. You can pretty much use any kind of palette knife. You could use, I even use offset spatulas sometimes. You can do longer palette knives. It's pretty much whatever you want. Um, and actually, since I'm using the entire stencil, I probably could go ahead and use something bigger, but I'll use those just in case I need something small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, cause this is, I'm using the whole stencil. So I'm going to use quite a bit of medium to start. I'm gonna need more than that. There we go. And as you can see, see how it's got this kind of cloudy look, but this is gonna dry completely clear. Now the key to doing this, and I love the way her analogy is, is that this is like putting butter on bread. You don't wanna bounce the spatula, you wanna just gently pull this along your stencil, okay? The, you really wanna make sure you're not pulling the stencil up as you're removing your palette knife from the stencil. Because like I said, you don't want that medium to go under it because it'll cause a problem with your 3D effect. So you wanna just gently, like she says, butter on bread. Okay. Really simple. And then as you start, it starts to thin out, which I can start seeing it's starting to do, I'm probably gonna need to add more. And if it gets it on your painting, it's not the end of the world. You can scrape it off. But remember, it's going to dry clear anyway, so it's not really the end of the world. So, so I'm going to finish this, do the rest of this painting, and then I'll show you, or I'm sorry, the rest of the stencil. I'm going to do the rest of the stencil, and then I'll come back and show you the part two. Our gloss medium now there's gonna be times where you're gonna have some going off the sides here like this don't worry about it we're gonna clean that up after we're done okay so now I don't have a whole lot of this yellow left but we're gonna do the best that we can so you I'm gonna put this yellow and I want this to be kind of my as much as my primary color as I can so I'm gonna get as much of this yellow on here as I can and if I have to I do have another yellow but I'd rather just use this because this is the one I used in the actual painting 
Okay, we're gonna go with that because that's all I've got, <laughs> pretty much. All right, so you use your palette knife again and just start spreading your color. And the idea is you want to make sure you're covering as much of your stencil as possible because anything that doesn't get covered with paint but just has the medium will just be medium, a clear spot of medium. So it's not that it's detrimental or anything, but it may not look nice. It might look like a void or something like that. So, and it's not a big deal if you don't like get the whole thing perfectly covered because we're gonna add an additional color for some depth and highlight. And once again, you want to make sure you're not lifting that stencil up especially now all right well i got the majority of the yellow there so that's good all right i'm gonna wipe this off ow i'm gonna add my quinacord quinacridone quinacridone i can't say it quinacridone rose i'm gonna add that i'm gonna add this to my outsides over here over here and then maybe a little right there okay and wait to see what this does it's like so such a cool effect I, I like I said I fell in love with this almost immediately when I saw this done and I like I said I just don't I don't do stencils the way I used to anymore just because this is such a cool little technique. Now see how that red and the yellow is starting to kind of blend together? That's going to look like oh crap. <laughs> Try not to get it on your painting. <laughs> this is why I keep moving it around. I'm right handed so. <laughs> but it's going to start blending on the painting as well like this so it's just gonna be really cool you'll see all right make sure I got just about everything all the spots there's not any just um, medium by itself you do have to be careful you don't want to get on your painting like what I just did <laughs> so you do have to be at least a little careful you try not to dig too much. You want to still keep it gentle so that your paint goes over your medium and it doesn't dig a hole and leave it blank. Okay. I think that looks good. All right. Now, we have to take the stencil off very carefully. Okay. So... I'm going to take this off. I'm going to hold the stencil. Try not to put your hand on the pattern, right? And try not to lift the stencil up when you're taking that paint off or the tape off. And we're going to lift very gently. We're going to like gently almost peel this off really, really slow. Okay? Here we go. tape's not letting go like it should. Uh, okay. Woo. Look at that. Come on. Tell me that's not cool. Look at this stencil. Look at that. See that? I mean, you could really literally put this on probably a piece of paper and come up with another design, right? Now, the key to this is if you can't wash this right away, what you want to do is I'm going to borrow this piece of cardboard real quick, just to be able to put that down, is take some water, and not near your painting, <laughs> and spray Spray the stencil down with water and 
then put a paper towel over it. That way it will keep the paint and the, the gloss medium wet until you can actually wash it, okay? All right, now, as you can see, like I said, I had some overhang, which is easily fixable. We're just gonna come and we're gonna right across, oops, <laughs> right across the edge here. Okay, I'm gonna turn it around and right across the edge. Or you can, if it did actually get painted too, you could always push it down, but I like just cutting it off at the edge. It looks just fine, so. So look at that. Look how cool that is. Now see, I did do a slight mess up right there. I think that was when I was taking the stencil off, but look at how that color, you have the yellow and the red is just kind of intermingling. And you have some red over here and more yellow over here. Oh, it is just, it is the coolest, coolest technique, right? So I'm gonna bring you in closer, so hold on. So that's it. That's how you add a 3D stencil to your art. Look at that. Tell me that is not so cool. I just love it. I am obsessed with this technique. And as you can see, it can really add dimension to a piece that, you know, is kind of flat, needs some contrast, right? Adding a pattern like this, and you could add two colors, you could do one solid color, you could do three or four colors, depending on how big the stencil is. Um, you could do so many different things with this. You could use part of that stencil instead of using the entire stencil, maybe use like a row of the stencil, you know, or put it in a different pattern, use just sections and move it wherever. I mean, it can be tedious, trust me, I've done it. <laughs> but what you can do with this is so cool and there's so many different kinds they're big they're small it just it's so awesome what you can do with this so i hope that you found this helpful if you did find this helpful i hope that you will give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing to the channel and then ring the bell so that every time i put up a new video you'll get notified when that happens if you feel like you know someone that might be interested in this that might like this type of video please don't hesitate go ahead and share this video with your friends and family so that they can learn this awesome technique too i hope you enjoyed this and um I'm hoping to be able to do some more tutorials. Every time I learn a new technique, I love to share it. So as I learn, so I share. So uh, until next time, hope you have a great, great day. Bye.